In this week's video, I'm gonna talk all about a telephoto lens and explain why I think it's the easiest way to improve your composition. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. Okay, in last Sunday's video, I had a lot of questions about long lens photography and people were saying, well, what, what do you mean by long lens photography? Why is it easier? Because I talked about my progression in photography and how I struggled with wide angle photography and how I said it was much easier to shoot with a long lens. So I thought in this week's video, I'll explain a little bit more about that and why I think that a long lens, and by a long lens, I mean anything above 50 millimeters really, um, but what I'm talking about is a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, the 50 to 140 and crop sensor format. And it really can make a big difference to your photography. And it's also an easier way to go out and get some good photos because it's much easier to shoot with a long lens than it is with a wide angle lens. I've got loads of great tips to share. So let's start with the first of those, which is just how it can simplify your photography. So if you look at this scene here, you can see that this is a really nice Lakeland scene. This is Rydal Water in the Lake District. There's some amazing mist, but there's quite a lot of complexity in it. Um, and, and when I was taking the scene, I remember thinking, actually, the focus is this island in the middle. And by putting a 150 millimeter um, focal length on my lens, my 70 to 200 at 150 millimeters, I managed to get this shot. It's much simpler. There wasn't as much to think about. I didn't have to think about the foreground, the midground, etc. I could just focus on that island and it made it much easier to simplify the scene. And quite often in landscape photography, simpler does mean better. This is another scene, um, which is you know a similar idea. This was in the Faroe Islands. And, and to be honest, in the Faroe Islands, you can put your camera in any direction and get a pretty good photo. But, you know, there's a lot going on. And th this is um, on Kalsoy, one of the islands there. It's quite a famous location. And w there was, we were on a workshop. There was a few of us, you can see on, on this peninsula here. It's a fairly scary walk, walking out to this peninsula, but, it's quite complicated. We've got this lighthouse there, we've got those people, we've got the, the, the dip in the middle and then the mountains in the background. And although this sort of works as a photo, I think it needs a little bit more care and attention to make it work. But by getting the long lens out and zooming in on this central part, um, then I could get a much easier and quicker shot um, that was again much simpler, just focusing on these recession of layers in the mountains behind. And luckily I had Mass on hand to go and pose there. And um, yeah, he, 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 he adds a bit of scale to it as well. It's quite often a good thing as well, putting people in your long lens shots. It, 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 it can you know really give a sense of scale and add drama to your images. Now I mentioned there that you can react a little bit quicker and that's one of the other reasons that I really like using the 70 to 200. It's just to be able to react quicker to things. And when I was in Scotland, I was on the Isle of Skye, at this beautiful beach called Elgol, looking out to the cooling mountains in the background. And I was trying to compose a wide angle shot, which is this scene here. I did a video on it, on it actually, you can go and watch it here and the light was changing really quickly. And I couldn't get that composition with this wide angle shot, but so by having a longer lens, it just meant that I could concentrate on the things in the distance. I didn't have to think about how to connect the foreground to the midground to the distance. I just thought that looks good in the distance, I'm gonna take it. And in this case, it was a 80 millimeter lens, so not super long. It still looks like a bit of a vista shot this, but it's with that longer lens. And it, and it really helped to simplify it, but also allow me to react more quickly to it because it didn't, wasn't as complicated to find that composition. The third thing is, is creating drama. You can create drama so easily with a long lens. Now, I'm not saying you can't do it with a wide angle lens. And in fact, with a wide angle lens, if the sky is looking amazing, then it can look really brilliant. But with a long lens, you can do it really well. And you can do it when perhaps drama doesn't exist so readily when you, know, when, when you look at the whole vista. So take this shot in Yosemite. This was probably about 11 o'clock in the morning. And we were in Yosemite Valley here. It was blue sky. I took this wide vista shot. And you can see that it's okay. It's not a bad shot. There's no drama in the sky though. 
So what I did was I just put a long lens on and focused on the recession of the mountains on the right hand side. I had half dome in the background here, but you could see that that recession was what was interesting. So by picking that out with a long lens meant that I could add drama into the shot. And then I've got another version of this, not a monochrome one, but one that I've just toned blue a little bit and cropped in a little bit tighter. And I think that works really well as, as well. And this was around about 100 millimeters. You know, the other way you can add drama is adding um, scale or, or by just removing things. Because often having that unknown within a scene um, can, can add to your imagination. I've spoken about this before with this church shot, um, but I wanted to speak about it in, in, in this particular scene here. So this is the lake scene. Um, you know, there's the lake, there's the tree, there's some sun on the tree, and there's the mountains in the background. This wide shot sort of tells the whole story. You know, there's, not, there's nothing left to the imagination. But as soon as you put a long lens on, then you start to cut out some of those things and you leave a little bit of it to the viewer's imagination. And often you want to do that. You don't want to tell the whole story. So all I've done is I've picked out this tree here. It's just getting the light. And then the mountain, you don't really know how big the mountain is. You don't really know where that, that, that tree is within the scene. So it just creates a little bit more of, of a mystical scene. And, and, and I think that's a really good thing to do with a long lens. Again, in this shot here, I've got this pano here, which looks amazing, um, and, and that's what I intended to do, but, but the shot I like most out of it was two individual shots, shot with a 200 millimeter lens really close in on these mountains. The first one's on the end of this mountain when the, when the cloud came down, and you can see here, this, this just looks so dramatic, um, and it's not telling that bigger story, it's just going closer. Just looking at those shapes and getting a bit tighter, you know, enabled me to get something that just had a little bit more drama in it. And I think that's that's really um, a really good way of doing things. You know, again, in this scene here, uh, this was in San Francisco when the fog was rolling in on this beautiful morning. I did another video on this, you can check it out here. Um, it was really a beautiful, beautiful morning. The, the, the fog was rolling in. It was sort of in waves coming in and out like this. And I took this wide shot and then there's this island. And I just thought, rather than have a, a shot that sort of shows the mist and then the land, what happens if I just show that island within the clouds? It leads, it leaves a little bit to the imagination. You think, wow, is that taken from a plane? Um, where is that tree? Is it cloud? You, you don't straight away just understand what this shot is and and I think that just adds something quite special to it um, and again you couldn't do that without a long lens so just think about that think about how you can add drama and mystery in your scenes because because a long lens can really help that the other thing is it's great for abstracts this is an abstracty shot of the Golden Gate Bridge uh, again with the fog and the light coming through just picking going really close in. So rather than shooting the whole bridge, which is probably what everybody does when they go to the Golden Gate Bridge, just go close in. I'm just using some of the shadows cast through um, the, you know, where, where, where the bridges and the sun coming through on, onto the fog. And then you can also do abstracts by just using depth of field with a long lens as well. So this was one where I just put my, my camera, I just put it down on the beach like this and then I had it on at about f2 or f4 maybe, shot the C stack in the background and then just had these amazing bokeh balls of the light that was reflected off the wet pebbles, these black pebbles. And it created this golden black, which is just so beautiful. So that worked, that worked really, really well. And on a similar theme, you can use your long lens for close-ups. So a lot of people think when, they, when, when you're shooting insects and um, flowers and things like that, that you need a macro lens, but you don't. Quite often you can shoot quite close with a 70 to 200 lens, but what it really enables you to do, especially if you've got an f2.8 lens, is get really shallow depth of field. So all, all three of these shots were, were shot with um, my long lens, and you can see that, that, that they've created this real simplicity to the scene because I've got a very, very shallow depth of field, so it's it's really good. And finally, I just want to talk about woodland, which I was talking about midweek, because it's it's again 
Woodland's difficult, it's complex, there's lots going on. If you try and shoot it with a 20 millimeter lens, you're gonna to have to do a really clever composition to make sure everything just works together. And again, I'm not saying you can't do that. Neil shots midweek, Neil Burnell, he's, do, he's done it really well, and I suspect a few of those were done with a wider angle lens. But generally, I'll be shooting you know, past 50 millimeters um, and, and using a telephoto to shoot my woodland scenes. Uh, and, and, and here's some examples. This one, you know, particularly uh, I did a video on of, of this amazing pair of trees here on Home Fell in the Lake District that are just backlit by the sun. And, you know, just by separating them with a long lens, creating this compression as well, has just created quite a, a dramatic shot. In fact, in fact, I've got just in front of me, print of that that I was just looking at. So yeah, so this is this is the print of that exact shot. You can see that I've re really created separation between the trees and the background um, and I've just been able to pick them out. I was on a mountain a reasonable distance away from this and it's worked really, really well. So think about it for woodland. Here's some shots that I've taken um, that, that I've probably not shared before, all taken with a long lens. Sailors passing on the street, are you ready for peace? Mm -hmm. Ships are filling up fast, are you ready for ease? Mm -hmm. Forget bad memories and leave those hurt. Just before I go, I wanted to say something about the versatility of, of, of this lens as well, because, okay, you can use it for um, landscape photography, and I just showed you can do some flowers, and you can you can use it for wildlife photography as well, but I've, I've also used it for taking pictures of my kids and, and pebbles, like these shots here, and it's fantastic for doing that. It really is fantastic. You can do some amazing, amazing shots with it, because it just isolates that subject. Speaking about pebbles, I've just had these um, stickers made for my packaging. So anybody that orders a print gets also a pebble sticker as well. And I wanted to say thanks so much for everyone that has ordered prints um, recently in this sale of 33% off. I'll keep it going for a few more weeks. Uh, I, I really do appreciate it. I love printing. It's really something that I enjoy. When somebody buys one of my prints, it, it's, it's really special to me. I'd also like to know what you guys think. You know, Have you got any top tips for using a, a long lens? I've not spoken too much about the technical aspects about it. Maybe if you've got any tips for using a long lens, how you mount it on your tripod, how you make sure you don't get um, vibrations, where you might focus, put them in the comments below and it'll be a really useful resource for everybody. I'll make sure I check them out as well and, and reply to uh, the comments as they come in. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. I've got a really, really exciting video next Sunday that's gonna take me a bit. I've been working on it most of this week as well. Um, so look forward to that. I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse of it and some of the things that I'm gonna be showing. Bye.